Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundWeb Studios is the answer. SoundWeb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. SoundWeb Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Evil of and enjoyed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forbes Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is a key ingredient for the holiday season. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs, huh? The holidays are coming. And what better time to give a gift for remembrance that makes you laugh and cry out at the same time? What if you get the grandma's recipes or just because those smiles and tears will just melt your heart? Call Karen Shaw at Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit PictureThisPhotoBooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books. Bring your memories back to life. They're whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. And also check out the Mike Widener Show over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today. And don't forget to check out the merchandise at themikewidenershow.com. And also check out the uh, Mike Widener Show merchandise on amazon.com under the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, and a lot more. Makes great gifts for family and friends 24-7. And don't forget to check out the Me and Molson Zia store at Amazon for great books like Missing, Once, Wrinkles, and for more great merchandise like T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, and a lot more. Go to amazon.com. Check out the Me and Molson Zia store. Make sure you purchase today. And don't forget to also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM as well as PayPal at the Mike Widener Show. And don't forget to support us generously at the themikewidenershow.com. Make sure you donate generously today. We're here with a terrific lady who um, is a singer, songwriter, and a pianist and is working on becoming a successful actress. And um, the story behind this and why this is special is that her mom was killed during 9-11 when she was two and raised by her dad. And she also has an album all called Damage as well, too. And um, it just has a lot of promise here. And um, it's got a great message to it. And she's also got some um, great works as well, too. More up and coming. This is one of the up and coming artists that you want to really look out for. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios, somewhere in the East Coast, around New York, New Jersey area. Ladies and gentlemen, the very multi-talented singer, songwriter, and the terrific Arrow Rose. Arrow, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, how are you? <laughs> hey, I'm doing great. And uh, thanks for being on as well, too. You got an amazing story. You're a singer, songwriter, pianist, and uh, you also <laughs> are working becoming a successful actor, which I could tell you're going to be. And you have a Thank really you. interesting story as well, too, that your mom was killed during 9 11 when you were two and um, yeah. also raised by your dad. And, um, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, this is the time as well, too. 20th anniversary. We'll talk more about that. You also have a new album I'll call, which is um, damaged as well. It's um, available on all the all the streaming platforms, and you just have a great story behind it. And before we get into all that, era, tell us how you first got started. Um, well, actually, it's kind of a funny story a little bit because uh, for my first birthday, my mom bought me a, a grand piano because she always wanted me to do music and she always wanted me to learn how to play the piano. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so um, she kind of actually really, I guess, started my whole musical journey because I don't honestly think I would have ever really taken up piano if it wasn't for her buying me the grand piano. So um, after she passed, I started... Uh, I wasn't really too interested in it as a kid, but as I got a little bit older, I started playing more and I took lessons and uh, I really just, you know, kind of started playing around and I just fell in love with the whole idea of music and I fell in love with the piano. So it kind of, you know, began from there. <laughs> mm, that's rather interesting as well, too. And uh, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your life? What was that one precise moment for you? Um, I would have to say, I just really believe that 
um, just music really touches people's souls. And I just feel like it, it's so special. And it's like one of the most special things in the whole world. And I never really connected with much really besides music. Um, in my life, I was never a good student. I was really bad in school. I really never had any hobbies besides the piano and music. So it's just something I felt like I was just kind of called to do. And I just realized that this is what I want to pursue. This is my dream. This is what, you know, I love. And it's, you know, it's a hard career and, you know, people get a lot of no's and stuff and people kind of look at you and they're like, oh, you want to do music? That's kind of crazy. But, you know, um, I just decided to pursue it and, you know, follow my dreams. Mm -hmm. And that sounds rather interesting as well, too. And who is your favorite artists, singers, songwriters, and especially pianists, um, you know, for you during while you're growing up? Wow. I love Adele. She's definitely like one of my probably greatest inspirations. I've been listening to her since I was a kid. She's just musically incredible. Her voice is incredible. Her lyrics are incredible. Um, I listened to a lot of Eminem growing up, a lot of Lana Del Rey. Um, just, you know, and I love classic rock too. I love Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. I love the Stones. I, yeah, that's also been like a crazy inspiration oh, to me. Oh because... yeah. One of my favorites. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I love classic rock. So, um, I kind of kind of incorporated some of that into my music. A lot of my songs have like electric guitars and rock drums. And um, just because I've always, I always loved classic rock. I've always loved rock. I've always loved that whole entire world. It was always so fascinating to me. Even as a child, I was always so fascinated with rock stars and the music and the lifestyle. So um, that definitely probably fueled the fire to uh, my passion for music. <laughs> Mm hmm. And of course, I was thinking about as well, too, going through a classic rock stage as well, too, with some of the um the, the operas out there, like with um the Who's Tommy, Quadrophenia. And of course, you had Pink Floyd, The Wall, which um I remember going to a midnight incredible. theater. That was a big thing. Oh, my gosh. That was so incredible. Oh, the, was... Comfortably Numb is probably one of my favorite songs of all time. I love Comfortably Numb. I think it's like has the greatest guitar solo of all time in the song. I mean, that guitar soul is just phenomenal. I'm like, it's incredible. So I really, you know, it's just something, like I said, is so special. And it's just always something I've been so passionate about. And I loved it. So, um, you know, I was always just been fascinated with all of it. Mm -hmm. It does sound fascinating. You also talked about uh, being a pianist as well, too. Who are some of your favorite, um, you know, classical pianist, concert pianist, or even like, say, um, you know, keyboards in the world of uh, music and especially rock? Um, I would say, you know, I, I did learn a lot of um, classical music. I would probably say, honestly, Beethoven was kind of a big inspiration to me because I could play for least like Moonlight Sonata. I mean, not that well, but, you know, it, it's still cool. I, I love, um, you know, that kind of just like those piano sonatas, I think, are so beautiful and so touching. So um, I really just uh, love his work. <laughs> That's fascinating. And um, and then uh, has anyone ever told you, uh, you know, being a concert pianist as well, too? Has that ever been a back in mind or just simply stick to um, the music? You're <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that I'm that classically trained, to be honest with you. I did take a few lessons when I was a child, but I was a little bit rebellious, to be honest. So I didn't really like the lesson. So I kind of ended up pretty much teaching myself and teaching huh. myself chords I can't read music believe it or not I cannot read a single note if you put like a sheet of piano music in front of me I would not be able to read it <laughs> I only play by ear so all oh. the songs that I've created were on the piano but um I created all the melodies just by ear so I would write down the chords but other than that I cannot play a sheet of music to save my life so I I, I can imagine playing Beethoven's as well. done 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 I'm done <laughs> yeah it's it's honestly every all of the Beethoven songs that I have learned I had to listen to and then try to find the melody on the piano and then that's how I learned the song like the whole Moonlight Sonata I've I can't read, you know, like I said, an inch of music, but if I hear a melody, I'll be able to play it on the piano. So that's kind of how I worked everything out. But I wish I was classically trained because I think it'd be more helpful to read music, but I was just, I guess, too rebellious and I didn't want to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I regret it now though. Now that I'm older, I regret it. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and of course it's common as well too you know people go through different paths and everything. And we talk about, you know, you know, going by ear and everything. The one 
musician that uh, brings to my mind is Peter Gabriel. It's that, you know, he's got imagination <gasps> just in his Peter head Gabriel. and also, you know, everything he does is like, he does everything by ear and his mind, you know, that's the whole thing. It's like whatever is in his whole system, it just comes right out in a magical way. Peter Gabriel is the first um, musician that makes me think of when you go things by ear. Really? I had no idea he didn't know how to read music because that's really, and I don't, I believe Jimi Hendrix didn't know how to read music. I'm pretty sure he was all self-taught. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure, but I'm not too sure. But I think Jimi Hendrix is all self-taught. But uh, yeah, I love Peter Gabriel. I, I love 80s and 90s music. <laughs> and and awesome. of course, nowadays, you can be able to teach yourself just about a lot of things. So I think you pretty much blaze a trail there, Errol. So you got that. So <laughs> yeah, I guess it's good in a way. I mean, at least I could still play. So <laughs> mm-hmm. that's amazing as well, too. And we'll talk about your uh, your latest release, uh, Damaged, and uh, some of your works in just one minute. But first, listen mm-hmm. to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit our line at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and evil love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Ford Riley, and many mm-hmm. So grab your copy today for goes Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Weiner Show is brought to you by a picture of this photo book, Remembering is the Key Ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs, huh? The holidays are coming, and what better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift for grandma's recipes or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books. Bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal and always uniquely you. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today at the Mike Widener Show. Check out the great merchandise at themikewidenershow.com. Also on Amazon.com under the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, and a lot more. Makes great gifts 24-7. And don't forget to check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon for great merchandise like T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, and also great books like Missing, Ones, Wrinkles, and more. Check out the Amazon.com slash Me and Molson Zia store today. And don't forget to also support the Mike Widener Show generously at themikewidenershow.com. Click on Donate. And don't forget to uh, support us on Anchor FM slash support and PayPal at the Mike Widener Show and Mike Widener VoiceOver. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific singer, songwriter, and pianist and working to become a successful actress, Errol Rose, here on the Mike Widener Show. And before we talk about your um, your latest release, Damage, a um, little bit of, little bit of uh, backstory behind it that, um, you know, this is a time of year where it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Your mom was killed during uh, 9-11 when you were two and raised by our dad. And of course, maybe you can just, um, you know, give us a background on it. And of course, everybody's got a story to share, especially on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's hard, you know, <laughs> especially the 20th anniversary coming up. It's a little rough. Um, but, you know, uh, I kind of live with it every day. So, I mean, I guess you could say every day is kind of like 9-11 I guess because you know I mean um you know I still don't have her but I guess you know it's a nice day for uh, everybody to remember um everybody that passed away so it's nice that people still don't forget and still um you know embrace the day and you know the people that died it's it's really nice that people come together on that day but um yeah I, I would say that's probably the whole uh point about damaged is that I really just the whole meaning behind it is that I, you know, even though that you're hurting and that you feel like you're not okay and that you feel like you're damaged, I think it's important to keep trying and follow your dreams, even though it may hurt, even though you may live with a broken heart every day, no matter what you've gone through, whether it was a loss or heartbreak or something else in your life. Um, I think it's important to not give up. 
and to continue to follow your dreams and to continue to follow your passions. So that's really the whole meaning behind Damaged. Mm -hmm. And also too, what was your mom uh, on that day as well too? Was she up in the uh, towers at work? Was she like outside the yeah. towers or, um, or, or where was she uh, at the time and uh, where was she working? She worked for a law firm. She was on the hundred and fourth floor, I believe. Oh, wow. uh, she, yeah, she was, she was up there. Um, she loved her job. She was actually in the first terrorist attack that I believe happened in the late nineties. I'm not too sure because I wasn't born, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was in the first terrorist attack that they bombed one of the towers and uh, she came out and um, everything, you know, she was good. I don't, uh, she just, she really loves her job. And my dad was like, don't go back to work. Like, you know, they're probably going to hit the towers again. Um, don't go back. But she, you know, just like everybody else, she had a passion. She really loved her job. She loved it so much. It was her whole life. So she, um, she didn't want to give it up. She didn't want to give it up. So she went back to work. And a few years later, um, you know, 9-11 happened. But, you know, I, I guess she could you could say she died doing what she loved. I mean, she had I don't think she had any regrets about going back to her job. She didn't, really didn't want to give it up. So um, I think she was brave, you know, for going back into the towers, even after that first attack happened in the 90s. So I think, you know, it's a mm -hmm. brave thing to do. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I'd be willing to share my story as well, too, of 9-11, where I was uh, driving my son to um. To, to his school. I worked at the school at the same time. And um, all of a sudden I heard uh, a news report cut in. I was ready to uh, take down a number for an ad I was interested in. And it's yeah. a special report. And then, and then, and then when they said that the world trade center got, you know, one of the airplanes hit. And I thought at first, it's like, I said, is this some kind of joke? It's like, you know, why would a plane, you know, you know, know. Crash, crash into a world trade center? Is this a publicity stunt? Is it a joke? Or an accident? It, or, People it thought like, it was an accident. My dad said too. Or, or of course it could have been uh concocted by howard stern you know he loves to do those right like things. a hoax type of thing you're right 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 yeah right and exactly and i thought to myself why would somebody run a plane into the world trade center you know that and then seven yeah. minutes later it's just like you know a second plane hits the world trade and i thought what's with these people and these pilots and then the third one hit and i'm like what the hell is going on here seriously it's like did the radars go ballistic was there yeah. something wrong with the planes or something? And then the fourth mm -hmm. was ready to go out to the Pentagon, but then you had all these. Brave I know people. they took it down. Yeah, yeah. And, and then all the brave people that got up on the um, you know, the plane. You know, they went to the terrorists. They took pillows and start beating them up, and then the terrorists <gasps> wow. just gave up. It's like you know, fifty hundred people on a plane that's heading towards the Pentagon crashed in the field in Pennsylvania. So it's no, like those people are heroes. Oh my god, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, the bravery that all those people had to endure is just it just blows my mind and, and yeah. of course i think about pillows as well too i like to take a a, a a pillow to a terrace and just beat him like that too so it's like now you gotta think it's like pillows are definitely a good weapon and greatly appreciate so that was one of the <laughs> things i heard on the radio too and um and then going into yeah. work one, one of the guys that i worked with that his his cousin or second cousin worked worked uh in in accounting that was in the uh the world trade things the 40th or 50th floor but the thing oh, wow. was, was that he called in sick that day and someone oh, else yeah. came in and that guy just said he really felt guilty and felt bad for the guy who came to fill in. And um, and then 9-11 happened. It was like, you know, that could have been him. I mean, he really felt yeah, bad calling in sick. And then I had another guy whose clients were up in the 120th floor, which is like um, wow. an, ex an export trading company. And uh and of course, the guy I worked with uh, was having a tough time with these deals. And he was looking for the big one, you know, the multi-million. And here we go. He was ready to um, seal the deal. And by the time they're ready to close the deal, full lines went dead. Yeah, hit. The deal mm -hmm. was gone in an instant. So every, to the point I'm trying to tell everybody, everybody has a story about 9-11 directly or indirectly, or it could be like a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend all the way down the board that could have been affected in some way. And I'll tell you one yeah. thing, the point is everybody's got a story when it comes to 9-11. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little tough because I guess I kind of have to relive it every year, which is, you know, a little rough because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's hard, but then, you know, all these stories get brought back up and all the photos and the videos come back out. And it, it's just, 
you know, it's a little hard. I'm usually okay during the year. I mean, it's still tough, but I guess when everyone um, is, uh, you know, always posting the photos, I don't mind talking about it, but I would say I really don't like watching the videos and the photos. I really, uh, that's not really something I, you know, obviously like doing, but you know, it's, it's good that everyone has, you know, can somewhat relate and bond over this very, you know, traumatic thing that happened. I feel like it actually brings people closer sometimes. I feel like trauma can really bring people close and it just, you know, shows that everybody goes through something. So it helps if people are just like a little bit more compassionate or empathetic. So, mm. yeah. And, and of course, you know, especially with your song damage as well too, that should bring a bit more understanding and, um, you know, yeah. or, or I could say maybe like a bit of a closure or bring more light to, um, you know, you know, what really happened, like with 9-11 affecting. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Of course. I mean, I, you know, damage, I really wanted to be about anything. I mean, it could be about 9-11, but I really wanted just to people to, I guess, bond and relate over any traumatic thing that has ever happened to them. Like I said, it doesn't matter what it is. Everybody deals with pain and trauma differently. So I think, you know, having a song that expresses that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to have heartbreak, but you should try to overcome that heartbreak and all that pain and turn it into whatever you want, whether it's art or something positive or something good or to help other people. I just think it's a good way of showing that even though you're hurting, you mm. can still pursue your dreams and you could still find love and find peace somehow, even though it's hard because it is hard. It's, it's never easy. You know, anything in life is really not that easy. Mm -hmm. Right. I do. I do get your point. understand what you're saying. And also besides with damage as well, too. And uh, what are some of the other songs that you got out right now and what's currently in the pipeline for you? Well, actually, Damage is coming out the 29th and no, no other songs have dropped yet. But I do have a second single dropping called Tarrant. I wrote it about Alice in Wonderland. It's like one of my favorite movies in the world. I love Alice in Wonderland. Oh, really? Yeah, it's one of my, I'm actually doing a photo shoot for it uh, this week to do promo pictures and we're dressing as the characters and it's going to be really, really cool. But a lot of my inspiration I get is actually from like movies I really love. So um, it's a pretty cool song. It, it's very Alice in Wonderland. I was always hoping that like maybe Tim Burton would come across it one day because <laughs> he's like my favorite director. And I really like want to honor him with this song. And um, just because I think he's just a genius and everything he does, I, I just love his movies. And um, I just love the whole idea of being weird and, you know, being you and stuff like that. So um, I hope people like this song. I think people will like this song. It's a, it's a pretty interesting song. And, and what's it called, Tarrant? Tarrant. It's, it's, it's the name of the Mad Hatter. So I guess if you're oh, like an Alice okay. in Wonder. Yeah, because everyone calls him Mad Hatter, but his real name is Tarrant. And uh, I don't think there's a song out there called Tarrant. So I just thought it was a unique name. And um, yeah, I, I think people will enjoy it. It's a pretty interesting song. It has more of a rock vibe. Mm -hmm. is, is he one of your favorite characters? Who, who's your favorite character in uh, Alice in Wonderland? Probably the Mad Hatter. Oh, okay. I <laughs> That's right, like, yeah. I haven't liked Chesh, you know, is it Cheshire the cat because I'm a cat lover. I and it's like, cat. it's like, I love what, the cat. Th things aren't real as they seem, or what was that line he always said? Things yeah, aren't as real I as they seem. Things aren't as real as they seem. It's funny because I actually have a few quotes from uh, the movie in the song. Um, one of it's, it's okay to be mad because the best people are. And I think it's interesting because we always try to be very, um, you know, normal or act, you know, kind of normal, you know what I mean? But I think everyone has a different way of expressing themselves. And it's kind of like another way of like accepting your personality and accepting that people are different and charismatic and funny and, you know, strange. Maybe you can even call it if you want to call it strange, but that's why I love Tim so much is because in all his movies, he expresses his personality and all of his characters. So I just think it's really, really interesting. So I'm hoping that people will resonate with the song a little bit. As, it does sound interesting. You're also working becoming a su successful actor or actress as well, too. And uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, I uh, went to Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute for three years. I studied method acting, which is really interesting because method acting is tough. I mean, at least for me, it was 
tough mm-hmm. because you it's I would say it's emotionally draining like every day you would have to go you would have to really kind of dig into your head and pull out all these emotions that you really don't want to pull out because method acting is really about putting yourself into a character and really becoming that character and using your own emotions so technically it's not really acting because you're using your real raw emotion you're just playing someone else Hmm. so um method acting it is hard (laughs) it's it's hard because like i said it's emotionally draining sometimes Hmm. when you have to constantly pull out all these emotions and change and uh you know it's um but it's very interesting and i love it and it's definitely something i would really um love to pursue in the future and and what drew you into uh method acting um i love Marilyn Monroe <laughs> and and Lee Strasberg was actually a mentor to Marilyn he uh she I believe he she was one of his first students and she lived with him I believe for a while and uh, a lot of the great legendary people have studied under method acting uh I believe Robert De Niro Al Pacino uh Angelina Jolie Lady Gaga um like it's just I, I can't even think Gene Wilder um just so many, Dustin Hoffman, I believe, is a method actor that studied at Lee Strasberg. So many amazing, amazing people that inspired me to pursue the method acting. Mm-hmm. And there's one person I could think of is Jackie Gleason, you know, going back to the days of like the beginning of method acting. He was just unbelievable. You think he's a loud mouth all the time. But then when he actually yeah. does his orchestra, it's crazy. he's just, he's a really gentle person. I mean, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how people can just transform. I believe Jack Nicholson is a method actor. I mean, it's just really crazy how people can just completely transform themselves. That's why I think it's so interesting to uh, play different characters is because you get to learn things about yourself that you never even even knew existed like an emotion a feeling a personality it's just it's really cool you kind of like really dive deep into yourself and um it's uh it's it's interesting that's for sure it's, it's it does sound inter- thing. it does sound interesting and uh, who are you seeing some of your other favorite actors and actresses growing up um probably my favorite actor has to be johnny depp I love Johnny Depp just because I, I grew up watching him you know, in Tim Burton movies. I grew up and, uh, you know, all his personalities and everything that he plays was so authentic and so real and beautiful. And I just I, I love everything he's done. I love his work. So it's 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 very inspiring for me. Um, it has inspired me to act. Definitely. Like 100 so. oh, percent. That, oh, that's interesting. What's your favorite Johnny Depp movie? Oh, that's a, oh, I have way too many, but I'd probably say Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> that that's like his first one, wasn't it? It was one of his first ones. Yes, oh I love gosh. Edward Scissorhands. I think it's great. He played Ed Wood, which is also really really good. Um, he's just done a lot of really awesome work, so I just really look up to that. And, and he course, played Mad Hatter. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Who cannot and forget he was that? And Alice in Wonderland. How can you forget that? <laughs> <laughs> I still enjoy him in Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know why. So <laughs> me too. I know he's a legend. Really, I mean Jack Sparrow. The way he created that character. That's why I think it's so amazing. Actors are just incredible people because to create a personality from really nothing and just to create a whole new person. I feel like that's just such amazing talent. It's it's really incredible. So, yeah, I love it. That is something. And how about some of your favorite movies growing up? Favorite movies. I love The Great Gatsby. I always loved, like, you know, the older style movies or movies that ha- were set in a different era. I love movies like that. Um, I always found that very fascinating. Uh, I loved Marilyn Monroe movies, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, you know, all that <laughs> Who kind <of> doesn't? Stuff. <laughs> I know. I, I, I love all. I love just cinema in general. So um, it's just something that it's just a world I would love to be a part of. If, if I ever got the honor to be a part of that world, um, you know, I just I would love it so much. You know, it definitely sounds like you got an amazing career ahead of you. And in the meantime, where can we find all your works and all your music at Arrow? Uh, my website will be out in about a week. It will be arrowrose.com. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Amanda Rose O'Connor and my music video too. my damaged music video is coming out on YouTube and uh, on the 29th. So you can find me on YouTube at Arrow Rose. We certainly would do so. And what's coming out for the amazing Arrow Rose in 2021 beyond. We'll find out in just a minute. You listen to the Mike Widener show at the Mike Widener show.com powered by Sonic Web Studios. 
Visit our line at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, International Warring Author, Mia Molson's You Have Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Also brought to you by a picture of this photo box. So remembering is a key ingredient. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit pictureofthisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order during the Christmas season. And we'll be back with the multi-talented Arrow Rose after this timeout. We're back with the amazingly multi-talented Arrow Rose, singer, songwriter, pianist here on the Mike Widener Show. And um, look for her release, Damage, to be coming out as well, too. And we also talked about, um, you know, the 20th anniversary of uh, 9-11. And, um, you know, speaking of 2021 uh, and beyond era, what can, we, what can you expect from me in the future? Well, I um, would love to release my album, hopefully. I, I, will, I definitely will, but um, I think we're trying to lean for more of the end of September. Uh, that will have 11 songs on it and um, probably more music videos for sure. I'm actually performing um, at a 9-11 uh, concert event so that will be nice. That's going to be like my first real performance. Nice. So I'm really, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, a lot of great people will be there. So that'll be really awesome. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll get more performances in the future. That sounds great. We're certainly looking forward to it, Arrow. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? My biggest influence in my career? Um, I would possibly have to say it would probably be Eminem and Johnny Depp, probably. <laughs> okay. Well, that sounds pretty good. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I would have to say, always follow your heart. No matter what people tell you, no matter what people say at the end of the day, it's your life and it's your passion and it's your dream. And I just believe that you should never give up. You should never give in to the no's or the doubt that people will have because there's always going to be doubt and negativity. But at the end of the day, you have to do what makes you happy and you have to follow your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's very important as well, too. Once again, the multi-talented singer, songwriter, pianist and upcoming actress, Ero Rose here on the Mike Wagner Show. Ero, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Thank Who's you so favor? much, Keep Mike. us up to date. And don't forget to uh, keep in touch and look forward to having you again soon. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your works? Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely arrowrose.com and uh, my YouTube, arrowrose. <laughs> Sounds good. We're looking forward to it. Once again, Arrow, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific, and we definitely wish you all the best. You've got a great future ahead of you. Thank you for having me, Mike. <laughs>